All right, looks like we've got a couple people raising their hands, so that's good. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is really uh, a presentation made, made for people that, that have electrical, so if you do have electrical, definitely uh, uh, this is kind of a good starting point for building your libraries. Um, what we're going to talk about is, is a whole bunch of different things regarding your, your schematic tool and then also the three-dimensional tool within SolidWorks Electrical. Uh, it's a fairly new tool, so definitely reach out to Trimac or your, your local reseller. Um, it's, it's really meant to, uh, you know, if we're here there to, here to help you. And, and uh, so if you guys do have any questions throughout this presentation, don't hesitate to ask. But um, likewise, also, I'll, I'll give you my contact information if there's anything that ever does come up and you're, you're not quite sure uh, what to do. You know, give us a call, and, and we can definitely take a look uh, for you. That's my direct line there. Um, as well as my email, and uh, you can also tweet me, and then uh, there's a hashtag there for this presentation as well. So uh, feel free to uh, reach out in any way, fashion, or form. Um, and then also there's a great picture of me. I, I don't look that good today, a little bit under the weather, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take you through how to build your electrical library uh, lightning fast. So to begin with, what we want to do is we want to take a look. The, there's there's actually a whole toolbar inside of the schematic tool dedicated to um, your libraries. And, and when I say your libraries, there's, there's not only a, a uh, libraries manager, so that's kind of like the library of the library, um, but we also have manufacturing, cable, uh, title block, 2D footprint manager, and symbol manager. And we're going to go through uh, pretty much all of these to some degree, and, and we'll basically take that and and uh, expand on each one of those topics. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Libraries Manager. That's going to be our, our first look. Second thing is going to be the Manufacturing Parts Manager. Um, the third thing we'll take a look at is going to be Cables. Cables will be the next thing, which these, like I said, these are all individual libraries. Uh, there's even a Wire Library Manager, so we'll talk about that. Uh, there's a Symbols Manager um, and Symbol Library, basically, so we'll talk about those. So the first thing, Actually, before I get started, I, I did actually add in this thing last last uh, real at the end, last minute. Um, there's a there's a big carrot. I'm going to put this. I'm going to dangle a carrot in front of you guys' faces, and and uh, at the end of this presentation, uh, I'll show you uh, actually an easier way to get get to some of these options. So I'm going to show you kind of the hard way, but I'm going to dangle this carrot, and, and it's a uh, it's kind of a quick little trick that uh, that I found here recently. All right. So the first things first, though, let's take a look at the library manager. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we keep our, our librarian very happy. So uh, if you've seen SolidWorks Electrical, you've been using it, there's a lot of data inside of it. And, and really, it can be really messy and, and um, kind of basically a conglomeration of, of a whole bunch of different things. And one of the first things that I want to recommend doing is, is making sure that you have uh, your own library. So when you take a look at the schematic tool, uh, we have a very similar interface to SolidWorks. So if you guys are familiar with SolidWorks, there is a ribbon across the top. Uh, we actually want to take a look at the one enabled uh, library. And when we take a look at that, then what we'll see is that we have a whole bunch of different managers inside of these, inside of the library uh, ribbon. So if we take a look at the library's manager here, let's go ahead and and take a look at that. This uh, comes up here. And what this is is a way to create your own library. So for, for example, if you're working on your company, um, what you'd want to do is create your own library. So that way you can stick all your symbols, all your parts, everything, all your wires, cables, manufacturing part information. That will all go into this particular manager. So real quick, real easy. You just hit new there. You click on library. We go ahead and name this webinar. Um, and this is this is going to basically house a whole bunch of information. Let's click OK there. So now you can see I created this new webinar, this new library named webinar. And we can stick whatever file we want into it. Um, now we could create our own symbols inside of SolidWorks Electrical. We could also download our own. We could um, draw them in another program such as draft site or potentially as um, maybe we draw them in, in uh, a different program 
even SOLIDWORKS would be a great option. So, uh, in fact, what we're going to do is I'll take you through that whole process. But really quickly, I, I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that you could create your own library, so that way you can kind of house all the parts that you're used to. So that way you don't get overwhelmed. You know, if you're trying to work on your project, it could become very difficult to find the symbols that you're used to or the symbols that you've created if you don't have them all in your own library. It makes it real simple if you have it in your own library. All right, so so really that's that's uh, just the libraries manager in essence. That's that's a real quick topic there. Let's go back over here, take a look at our PowerPoint. So hopefully you can see that's pretty simple. All right, next part of this is taking a look at our manufacturing parts manager. So what does that really mean? Well, what that means is there's another library for the manu manufacturing parts manager. Now that is a location that you can go to and you just click on that. And this will actually take you through um, a classification of all your different symbols. So you can add a part here. You can, um, you can import parts as well. One of the things that I wanted to show you, though, was the ability to come in here and do online content. So, for example, if you don't have uh, 3D, a 3D symbol or you don't have a 3D part, um, you click on this, it will actually take you to a website called SolarWorks uh, Electrical Portal. And all you have to do is click on this. And, and there's actually three different options here. we got my uh, MySolarWorks.com. We also have 3D Content Central. You may have heard of 3D Content Central. You also have the ability to go to SolarWorks Electrical Portal, which this is fairly new, uh, actually brand new, I think, in, in, uh, within the past few, few months. Uh, basically, all it's going to do is ask you to register if you don't have a um, uh, username and password already. Pretty straightforward, simple, nothing, nothing costs any money here. Uh, and it takes you to this website where you can ask for content. You can also go to a catalog. So underneath that catalog, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different um, uh, manufacturers, uh, different parts. So these have all been, uh, some, of, some of these, you know, if we look underneath here, like Schneider Electric, you can see there's there's automation control, electric distribution, um, and there's a whole bunch of different parts in here. So you can download all of these. There's there's some PDF brochures. Really pretty uh, slick that they offer this, and it's all like I said, just there to download. We also ask for content. We also can go to Trace Parts Online, which is another place. So I'm going to take you to another location here. This is a place where we can do a search. This this actually has a lot more data, I think, than the, the previous site. Um, and what I want to do here is just kind of expand out on electrical engineering. And I'm going to go and download a contactor. And what we're going to do is, under electrical engineering in general, go under contactors. Go under contactors, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of contactors. In fact, about 4,600 uh, results. 4,600 results. So that's quite a quite a few there. You can do this based off the of last update product name. You know, maybe you want to narrow your search. You can do that. Um, this is one normally open contactor. So if we want to download that, we can just click on this. Takes us to our uh, takes us to the next location. You can add that to the download center or download it right now. Uh, and you can do this for SolidWorks. And let me see here. Actually. You can also do this for Electworks, SolarWorks Electrical. So maybe if we switch over to SolarWorks Electrical, so it's going to download. It's going to give us a, a 3D preview of this particular contactor as well, or any of the different types of, of uh, symbols, you know, different type of parts that we'd be using in our electrical enclosures. Uh, we can also do this as AutoCAD, you know, so as a 2D uh, footprint. You know, so that's that's also an option. I'm just going to go ahead and go back over here to just SolidWorks. And like I said, we can just download this. And it just basically just lets us download that and put it into our, our um, onto our, you know, in, into our database or into our, uh, onto our computer basically. And then we can, we can make that a smart part uh, through the program, through 3D, uh, SolidWorks Electrical 3D, or through um, the schematic tool, which we'll talk about a little bit further when, when I do get this, uh, when this does come down. Um, Uh, well, it appears like my connection is a little slow. That's okay. I've got one downloaded already. So we'll, we'll go ahead and move on here. Uh, basically, I, I just wanted to give you that information. You know, you guys should know that, that this 
is available for you, so don't feel like uh, you're locked into, you know, you, you, you installed Solvers Electrical, and, and all of a sudden now this is the only, you, you have to look for your only symbol, your only manufacturing part, and all of a sudden now it's not there. So what do you do? And this is, these are the options that you have to go and, and find this stuff. All right, so to recap, it was, it was 3D Content Central, SolidWorks Electrical Portal, and then also uh, this website here where it's SolidWorks Electrical. Uh, you can also see here it's tracepartsonline.net, so you can go on there and get a free, uh, as far as I know, you can get a free account. You just uh, got to register and give me your username and password. All right, so once we uh, get that, we can go ahead. Uh, well, one other one that I want to mention uh, would probably be GrabCAD, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with GrabCAD. So GrabCAD would be another option that you could go and check out. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look back at our PowerPoint. So hopefully you can see that that was simple as well. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, this, this presentation is meant really to just kind of expose you to what options do you have if the part you're looking for is not there in the database like uh, when you download, when you download or install this software for the first time. All right, the next thing here we'll go ahead and take a look at is going to be cables. So cables uh, is what our next topic is. So cables are, are, are pretty straightforward. Um, there's a cable reference manager, so we're still under the library tab, cable reference manager. And you can come in here and you can create your own uh, new reference. You can import some. Uh, and what you want to do is actually select you can see here if you're in unclassified uh, elements, you can't create a new reference. But if you go down here to AWG, American Wire Gauge, so then if you want to create your own cable, uh, just click on New Reference. You can go ahead and give it your own, uh, specify your own uh, conductor size standard. So we'll go ahead and get the AWG in there. We can go ahead and give it a part number. We can give it a manufacturer. Uh, we can pull down and select that, so maybe we want to go ahead and specify that's a SolidWorks uh, created uh, uh, cable. <laughs> um, not sure that they're in the business of creating cables, but we are gonna, we're going to do that today. So then we got our specification there. This is where uh, earlier mention, I mentioned that, that you would want to create your own library, so this is where we can go ahead and throw that into our library that we named a webinar. Uh, we also have the ability to select a family or a new one, so if we wanted to kind of basically put this in a particular area, so maybe it's the 11 AWG, which I know there's no 11 American Wire Gauge, but basically just grouping that we can kind of classify it so we can get it uh, get to it a little bit faster. I think the key here is making sure you stick this into your library. Um, if there's a standard, you can put all this different information in here. Uh, maybe you, have, you know what the diameter of this cable is going to be. One of the things I do like here, uh, one of the things I would um, recommend, let's see here, maybe we want to make sure uh, there are uh, a specific bend radius, maybe there's a voltage drop, and you know, is this a power cable? What kind of, what kind of cable is this? Miscellaneous. So we can go ahead and uh, make that whatever we want, uh, specific color, so maybe we have this, this is going to be red, we'll go ahead and place that in there. We also have a description down here. Maybe we'll give it some type of description. All right. Let's see. We're going to add in our cable cores down here as well and our types and descriptions. So maybe we're going to go ahead and specify that there's three. Uh, maybe we'll do four here through this. And then we can specify the colors within this. You know, this is really the cable, and then this is this is the wires inside. So. Uh, or the cores inside. So we're going to go ahead and leave this the way it is. Voltage drop, uh, I go ahead and give this a 20. Um, all right, so that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we'll be able to see that we've got a cable in here. So there it is right there under the American Wire Gauge. We got it under the family of 11 AWG and its manufacturer is SolidWorks. So that's where we got it. Um, like I said, we could go over here to filters. We could uncheck this box, go to our library, and find it there as well. And I think that's really a powerful 
uh, ability to do that, we can go ahead and find the cable that we need uh, that's in the it's in our library. So that's uh, that's pretty pretty helpful there. All right, let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a, a motor here. And actually, I'll just go ahead and just copy this motor. And we'll go ahead and draw, draw in that cable. And what I want to do is go into our manufacturer here of our, our manager of our wire style. Actually, yeah, and we'll just go ahead and draw that cable. All right. So that looks pretty good. So what we'll do is um, take a look at this cable. And we can see that it's connected to our terminal strip. It's going to our motor. So that's OK. Everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and uh, switch on over to um, basically what I want to do is go back to our PowerPoint and take a look at uh, the next thing, which is talking about uh, the wires. And the wires actually have their own wire style manager. So this is in, this is kind of hidden. So so really, one of the things that I would like you to pay attention to is is where this is at, because uh, it's not in a in a place that you would normally see. So really, when we're on our multi-line diagram and we're wanting to draw this, one of the things that that I would think that would be important is I think that the wire style manager should be under here somewhere, but it's not. It's actually underneath draw multiple wires. When you go in there. You have to click on this little ellipses button right here, and that will take you to the location of where your wire style manager is. So when you go into this location, this is where you can specify, you know, and create your own wire styles. Uh, basically, give you the ability to uh, to create your own your own uh, types of wires. And this doesn't have to be electrical; it could be hydraulic, it could be pneumatic, any anything. It's just basically uh, specifying some properties so that way you don't connect to wrong type of wire to the wrong. Okay, so what we want to do now, um, I actually want to go ahead and draw some wires here. And we'll go ahead and draw in those four wires. Okay. Get those in there. Um, I want to go ahead and associate these with uh, with that cable, so we can go ahead and associate the cable cores. We're going to go ahead and associate that with that cable that we drew on the other side there. And that was actually W10, so we'll go ahead and associate that. All we have to do is just highlight these, associate the cable cores there. All right, and we'll go ahead and just, um, this is just a symbol here. Uh, what we could do with this, I want to actually show you guys how to create a symbol like a 2D, a 2D symbol like this. Uh, but for the time being, let's go ahead and just drag and drop this uh, just to get our motor symbol down here. And uh, I want to make this the same motor as the before. So we'll go ahead and go into our symbol properties. We can go ahead and switch this over just by associating that by specifying which motor that is. All right, so now what we can do is go ahead and we can go ahead and um, go back to the PowerPoint. The, the wire style manager is really what I wanted to highlight in this area. Um, and really, that's pretty straightforward. If you do get in there, it, it, it's just finding where that's at is, is really the, the hard part. So uh, basically, that, uh, that can be simple. Like I said, just finding where that's at, which is underneath the uh, the draw multiple wires, hitting the ellipses button, going into the manager button. The last part of this is uh, the symbols. So importing the, from a DWG file, uh, symbols can be any number of things. And obviously, we want to represent something that's, that's going to be uh, uh, basically um, very, very recognizable, right? So hopefully, uh, you guys recognize this as the infinity symbol, maybe the peace symbol. You know, these symbols, maybe this one here, this is the save button, uh, which most people uh, you know, that were born in the 90s or 2000s probably have no idea what this really is, but that's okay. Uh, it's still in every piece of software that I've seen. So 
with inside of the symbols portion, it's really kind of more complex than the rest of the managers. If we take a look, there are single line symbols, there's multi-line symbols, there's 3D part symbols, which are kind of, they're, they're manufacturing part symbols as well. We also have footprints, and we have PLC symbols. All right, let's take a look at what we've got inside of our symbol manager. So inside of our library tool, again, we have our symbols manager. And we can do a couple of different things here. We'll actually, uh, I had I had Solvers open earlier, and, and I drew a, a contactor. And, and all I'm going to do is go ahead and import that. And I saved it out from Solvers as a DOG file. So it's pretty straightforward. You can add a directory. You can add your files. Basically, all we're going to do is go in here and find that. So here it is right here, North 3D contact, Contactor. Uh, let's go ahead and use this one here. Click on Next, and we can go ahead and click on Next. And you can replace that. Do not keep both. I've done this before, so what we can do is go ahead and, and uh, replace this. Let's go ahead and stick it in the new library that we created, that webinar library. All right, looks pretty good. Uh, three Pole South, that's the new name. Let's go ahead and just give that a uh, new name there. Uh, three Pole, Three Pole Contactor. Click on Next, Next, and Finish. Uh, and I don't want to save that configuration, so I'll go ahead and click on Finish there. Basically, what that's going to do is bring in that Three Pole. Uh, contactor into the unclassified elements, and what that means is basically that we could go into uh, go into this and make some changes. We go into the properties of this contactor. You can see that we've got uh, that three full contact. That's the name we gave it just now. It's in the library, so that's the key there as far as as, as what we talked about earlier. Uh, we can also give it a classification here now at this point. We can go ahead and throw that in the contactors. All right. Once we do that, we can go ahead and click OK here. Now, one thing about this, though, I do want to go and open that up. So I do want to find that. And this is it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that up. What that does, it opens up this DFG file. And I actually want to make some uh, smart, smart things about this. So I, I want to make this uh, a little bit of a smart connector. So that way, when I drop this into my uh, schematic, will actually automatically trim my lines for me, for my wires. So in order to do that, what we'll do is go ahead and do some new attributes. And we can specify these. These are actually things that, that we want to kind of keep uh, reference if when we do drop this in here. So we can go ahead and say uh, maybe this location tag, maybe that tag. Maybe a fun function tag. That's not the fun tag. That's the function tag. Uh, reference description. Uh, so we got a few of those. That's OK. Maybe we throw in that one. Click OK. Basically, what this means is, is all these will be reported back when we place this symbol into our schemat schematic. Those, those uh, particular fields will automatically be populated with whatever information we put in there. Uh, so a lot of these will be representative based on what we specify when we do place the symbol. All right. So the next part of this, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's see here. What we want to do is actually do a new circuit. I want to actually do a couple of different new cir circuits here. So we'll do a connection point. Uh, actually, we'll do multiple connection points. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to do three of these. We've got three areas. So I'm going to go ahead and specify for all of these that we're going to do a normally open contact. We'll go ahead and do this as a passing uh, information there, transmission. And now what I want to do is actually get this. And I want to connect this to the end of that line. And I'll tell you this. When I first started doing this, that was driving me nuts. I'm like, I need to get that right on that line or right on the end of that. And I know it's all works it's simple, you know, it just snaps to the end of the line. But I, I got to come down here and turn on my O snap. 
So then it snaps to the end of that line. So I can do that. I can hit my right mouse button and it switches, it rotates this around so that way I can go ahead and place that on the other side. So that's the one circuit. I'll go ahead and rotate again, uh, put that on into that line. Go ahead and do the same thing on this one. Do that and just hitting the right mouse button rotates that around so that way it's it's basically going to know which way the wire should be coming. All right, so what we'll do, uh, we will go ahead and now save this. I think that's everything that we need to do. So we'll go ahead and just save this. And this is a, the three and a half inch floppy up here, save the current document. We'll go ahead and close that. And now what we can do is go ahead and find that symbol and contact your relays. One thing that I will tell you um, as well, this is may not be what you think it is. This may not be the name um, of the symbol. This may be the description that's shown here. And how you can figure that out is by clicking on column configuration. And it'll show you the text under the thumbnails is really by default set to description. So if you want to know the name, or maybe you want both of those, then you can go ahead and do that. And it's going to show you the name and the description there, if it has both of those in there. What I want to do is go ahead and just um, use that, that particular symbol. So I'll go over here and find it through this. There it is right there. So I can just go ahead and drag and drop that into our database. And we can go ahead and associate that. We can search and find this. Uh, maybe we have a particular uh, contactor that we like to use. Um, and like I said, we could have this already associated with something as well. Uh, maybe we have it associated with a Lebron. And I don't have any symbols in there, that's okay. We'll go ahead and find this. And actually maybe we do find it in my Tremec. No, nope, I didn't have one in there. I might have one for already created, so that's okay. What we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and leave that off there for right now. And what that does come in as is a K11, and that's in our main electrical enclosure. Now, if we wanted to, um, you can see that we've actually got the uh, the connection points are highlighted there in red. If we didn't want those to be there, then what we could do is actually open that symbol. And what I want to do is open the symbol, so that way I can make some changes to this. And you see here down here it says um, display connection points. So if I turn that off, uh, then it'll actually be a little bit, uh, uh, then, it, then it won't show those connection points. This is also where we could specify, you know, if we did want to have this as a specific manufacturer, maybe there is a Legrand uh, contactor we want this to be with. Uh, there may be a part that we already have, so we can find that. Um, and maybe it's that one right there, the cool contactor. All right, that was one I created earlier as well. So. Basically, uh, at this point, what we can do is go ahead and close this down. It does ask me, do you want to save those changes? And I say yes. And this doesn't update. Now, that's kind of interesting. What's what's going on there? Well, what we want to do is go ahead and update this. We can go ahead and just uh, come back in here. And what we want to do is update that symbol. And when we do that, now you can see that actually uh, that symbol now um, you know, doesn't have those connection points. All right. So, let's see here, what else do we want to do? So what we'll do next, we'll go back to our PowerPoint. That's kind of a, a real, like I said, real simple way to, to bring in your own DWG file, um, potentially one that you've been using for a while, and then make it a smart symbol so that way you can drop it in there and, and, and you can see that it does trim those lines. And I can pull this off of here and you can see it SolidWorks Electrical just in general will re reattach those wires if there is no symbol that's breaking uh, breaking that location there. And I drew this little circle there to just show that it was my symbol that I that I had created. So 
All right, so the next thing uh, that I want to do, let's go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint. Hopefully you can see that's pretty simple as well. This, this uh, product is, is really kind of built uh, very intuitive and very uh, straightforward. So um, you know, with that being said, uh, that's kind of the end of this. Now, uh, hopefully that does make your librarian very happy, uh, which I'm not sure who's, who would be in charge of keeping track of your library, but, but it may be yourself and, and uh, for your company. And, and uh, it will make it more beneficial if you can uh, straighten out what and how you keep track of your symbols. Now, what about that carrot I was telling you about? Let's go ahead and take a look at the carrot. <clears throat> this was uh, something like that got brought up to me uh, a while back that I thought was just pretty amazing. Um, real kind of an easy way to bring in your symbols. So if you have kind of a system, maybe you have all these symbols that are in a certain location, you have a description, instead of having to type all that data and going through everything that we did, you know, what you could do is just import through an Excel file. And now I know you're like, an Excel file, how is it going to bring in things? And I was exactly the same way, uh, potentially, that, that you guys are, are thinking too. If we go over here to Manufacturing Parts Manager. Now that's the trick, right? Uh, I'm telling you this little carrot, and, and uh, you may get confused. You may think, okay, Ryan said uh, to import. And you may think import-export. And you come over here and you see import data, and you're going to get confused. Because this is actually what I did the first time after I heard about this. And this is not where you need to be. You actually need to go into the library. You need to go to Manufacturing Parts Manager. And you can go into do an import here. And when you do that, what that allows you to do is import an Excel file. So we're just going to click on this little button right here. It takes me directly to my location where I have my, uh, my Excel data. I bring that in. And all this does, and this could be several sheets long, it's really, uh, <laughs> it's really pretty awesome when you start looking at this. Uh, what we're going to do is say that this is a, a part data. We'll go ahead and click on next again. And all this is going to do is basically specify that these are my uh, reference information. This is my manufacturing article number, my width, the height, the depth, the 3D part, the 2D footprint. So all of this stuff, all it has to do is reside in the location where it needs to be and in uh, uh, where this is referenced. And it'll find it, and it'll place that into our into our database, into our library. All right. So what we've got is reference, and all we do is to to map these fields out. All we want to do is basically drag our uh, information over and drop it on the top of our columns. So for reference, we'll just drag and drop that. Manufacturer description, and I put description down here at the end. And we've got mark root. We don't have one for that, but we do have article number. So we'll just drag and drop this. We've got our height, our width. we got our 3D part. we got our 2D footprint. All of this information, we're just mapping this out. And it's all just that simple. So the line diagram symbol, schematic symbol, our library. You know, so maybe we want to put this in, in our, in our um, library that we named. You know, right now it's going to the user library. That's okay. Um, so you get the idea here. All we do is hit Next. It actually will compare this, and it will show us if we have these in our database or not. And you can see here we've got two mod objects modified because I've already got these in there. Actually, two, two, 71 new objects and two objects that are going to just get modified. So. All right, that is the carrot to bringing in all those files through an Excel import. Now, how about that carrot? All right, what's the next thing? Well, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there is a claim that there's 500,000 components and symbols already built into SolidWorks Electrical. Well, when I installed 2014, I've been using it for the last couple of years, and I installed Fresh with 2014. Those 500,000 components, I couldn't find 
but a handful, and I was really kind of shocked. Um, they've actually put that in a location that you have to go and extract that information. They don't want to just overload you with all these different symbols. So uh, what I would recommend doing is going to this location, so under program data, which uh, potentially could be hidden, uh, you may have to show this folder. Or you could just do a percent uh, program data percent, and it'll open up that folder, and you can browse to solve the electrical catalog and parts. So if you just open up, uh, just hit Windows E there, percent program data percent. Spell it wrong. Program data. So then it takes you into Solvers Electrical. And I flip back to my page there. Solvers Electrical catalog. And then parts. These are all the files that come with electrical. It's that 500,000 components. But you just have to go in there and unzip the ones that you use. So that way you're not unzipping every all 500,000. Because 500,000, actually, that's quite a few. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody could ever use 500,000 different components. All right, hopefully that's uh, going to give you a good idea of how to launch your electrical library lightning fast. Once again, I'm Ryan Zeck. I'm with TriMec. And I hope that uh, gave you some answers, gave you some uh, good ideas on how to, how to get your questions answered and how to create your, uh, your library, um, how to create your, your basically your library that you're going to use for your electrical. All right, any questions? All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, wait here. It looks like uh, there might, might not be any questions, but If there are any questions, feel free to email me, or if there's anything that comes up, let me know. Yeah, Ryan, it looks like you did such a good job that you answered everybody's <laughs> questions already. Uh, maybe there's people. <laughs> we'll see. All right, well, I just want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Okay.